is a presentation by Oscar Robles of the reform. Okay, here I'm connecting to power, but I, I hope it won't be necessary. Thank you for your patience and for bearing with me. Now, uh, this is the second part. Maybe it's not so clear why there are so two sessions. It's out of protocol because the amendments to the bylaws require an extraordinary assembly, and then afterwards we have to do to complete all the protocol that we already mentioned. So without further ado, let us start with this presentation. Uh, could I see the next slide, any of the two? So, as Alejandro was telling you, much of these changes are due to electoral issues. Many of them result from uh, the uh, discussions that we have with the electoral committee. So the staff prepared proposals, and once they uh, are presented to the board, we see the principles, the principles of conflicts of interest. Uh, Apart from uh, the wording that happens at the initial stages, it's important to consider the initial discussions. And since uh, the end of the Assembly of 2019 in May, starting in June next month, we, uh, we started uh, debating this to see what we could do. So the first topics was uh, to standardize the electoral processes, those uh, that belong to the community and to the uh, statutes and to the bylaws. You know that the electoral committee was appointed to uh, um, attend the two electoral processes. So it would be good to ma make life easier for them to, be as, to have them as similar as possible, because it's easier also for the community to get involved and to raise their hands and to offer their um, assistance as a voluntary. So it was good to have them as similar. In addition, when we went through the statutes, we saw things that were no longer being done because now the situation is different or else because we had to make additional adjustments, such as uh, there are some topics that are new, transparency, for instance, although there is a lot that we do for transparency and accountability, all the decisions by the board, for instance, are presented in the report of each of our monthly meetings, and not just the decisions, but also the uh, we give uh, an overview of uh, the talks. What is it that we debated, and um, some uh, of the reasons why decisions were made. So that was an additional step to include that in the bylaw so that it wouldn't be up to each board, but it would be left as a principle. Some additional topics, minor issues, such as minor adjustments, we identified that we need to clarify some uh, usual practices. All this was uh, there was a significant number of adjustments and a significant number of topics. and. Uh, so we had to explain, not just to present them at the assembly, as we've always done. Well, we always say, well, this is the file of the adjustments with uh, track changes, as in uh, office, and we go to the assembly and then we vote. Now, given that there were many themes, we uh, added explanations to for the members and any anybody in the community or the public the interested in knowing so we didn't um, restrict the entry although it's a uh, target to the members, anybody in the community could do it. As a matter of fact, the people of the community entered. As to the themes, these are the big ten. The first is transparency. The second is the election periods. There is an issue there in the bylaw state that implies that, or that is related, uh, relates the elections with the assembly, and that uh, poses uh, risks because sometimes you may just get paralyzed. And with this change, we separate the elections of the three uh, statutory uh, bodies, uh, or the bylaw bodies, 
from the Assembly and not to have any elections during the Assembly. Because today, for instance, there's electoral process running. That is the Electoral Commission. And precisely, the Electoral Commission is uh, has to work uh, seeing to the um, seeing how things uh, happen, and that uh, causes uh, trouble in operations. The most important element of this reform of the bylaws is conflicts of interest for the members of bylaw organs. Yesterday, we gave the, the last uh, explanations. We had uh, a session where we talked of these uh, conflicts of interest of uh, the bylaw mandated uh, um, bodies and also in March when we called for the assembly and there we said what were the articles that we were updating and we gave an in-depth explanation given the relevance of these adjustments and in none of them did we have any significant complications. I can uh, give you the names uh, without further details. We looked for the support of members to nominations. It's not uh, just that somebody is interested, but also has the support and is backed by a couple of members. And you know that members, it's, we're not speaking of people, but the companies, the organizations that appoint you to represent, to support, to vote. To, to represent them and participate in the institutional life. Likewise, we, uh, we are proposing including two additional directors because of the implications. Uh, this was one of the things that we discussed more. And uh, the uh, objective mechanisms reflecting usual practices, things that we do today, for instance, what we just did electing uh, the president of the assembly and the secretary of assembly we do it on a uh, we re always repeat it because the bylaws do not establish that the uh, president of the assembly can also uh, can be the president of the assembly and the secretary the secretary uh, secretary of the board the secretary of the assembly so if we include it in uh, the uh, bylaws then we're going to save uh, time and voting so and then we have some minor adjustments that, and if they are new or, uh, and finally all these changes implied that we had to move text so as not to uh, change the original text all of this was explained in detail in these three instances so let me summarize in this slide how the process took place of all these issues. So all this discussion began back in 2019 with these initiatives in conversations with Electoral Commission and we submitted these to the board. And this dates back to the beginning of 2020, we had adjustments to the bylaws that had been accepted. And before that began, we resumed those conversations to ensure that what would be submitted to this assembly would be consistent and so that we would agree. This is what happened. In fact, we held two webinars, which is this part here. We had the informative session yesterday with some of you. Fifty members turned out up to that meeting. We didn't count how many votes they represented, but this was about 30 percent of the members who are today here were yesterday at that meeting on the adjustments. We also had questions. We had some concerns that were responded at that time. And now we stand here in, at this stage, which is the extraordinary assembly. So the results of that, we expect to have the validation of the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Uruguay to provide their blessing for the moment when these bylaws become valid. So this is just for the purpose of reiterating these are the efforts that traditionally have not been done. The bylaws do not require these instances from us. Once again, 
Because of the relevance of the topics, we wish to dedicate time to this, where we could have conversations with the members. So the next one I will skip, because this applies in case we check each of these adjustments. If we were to look at to each one of these, this would take more time. But the possibility does exist. I will just skip these. And once again, we go back to the topics in case you have any questions. Those who participated in the first webinar, so that we discuss these first topics, we divided them according to the complexity to have a more balanced discussion. There's no specific order in terms of content, but the idea was to have two balanced meetings. And we had between 20 to 25 participants in each of the two webinars. And after that, these two webinars were um, viewed. We left them in the invitation for the assembly together with all the details on the adjustments to the bylaws. And yesterday, we had that informative session that I was speaking about. Now, how will we proceed to voting? This will be as follows. First, there will be a global voting. That global voting is what I highlight here in blue. This is just one vote voting that encompasses all these adjustments. In the event of that voting being rejected, we would proceed to consider each one of these topics. So only if the global voting is rejected, we'll be voting these 10 here. And in that case, we'd have to go into the details, the full details. So if you vote positively in this global voting, we assume that the assembly is in agreement with these adjustments proposed. But only if the first voting is rejected, would then proceed to see these other specific topics. But you should also bear in mind that there are some that have subtopics. So this becomes even more complex, but we decided to do it in that way to make sure and determine what is what the assembly is voting against. I insist. I hope we won't reach these stages. As Alejandro was saying, this was a process that took 34 months of conversations at the board of directors, considering alternatives that were submitted by the staff to the consideration of the board of directors. So we think we are quite solid with this and convinced that these are reasonable adjustments. Let me make a couple of clarifications, two or three. Compared to the ordinary assembly, these adjustments to the bylaws require the approval of two-thirds of the assembly. So in the other case of the other votings, 50% plus one is sufficient. But here require two-thirds votes. Abstentions are considered votes against. So this discounts voice from the votes in favor. So if you consider you will be abstaining, please bear in mind that you're voting against the motion. And if you have any questions, if you're able to go to yesterday's session and you have any questions on some of these processes or you watch the videos of the webinar and it turns out that you had questions or you just could not participate in any of these and you have specific doubts, we could also clarify that before opting to abstain your vote. You're all entitled to abstain if you wish, but it would be interested, interesting to respond to your concerns if that is your intention, to abstain. So let us go back. So let us go on. So this was the flow in case of rejection. I will come back to this if the, in case this is rejected. But otherwise, there will be no need to confuse with the explanation. So we're now 
about to proceed to the global voting. We still have a couple of simple slides, but just for the purpose of clarifying this, this is a global voting where you are considering all the proposed modifications. Those who are aware of these would, would like to say that there were sufficient instances in which we could discuss these modifications. Remember that we need two-thirds of the votes for approval, and only in the event of rejecting this would go into each of the details of the topics one by one, which are the ones you have over here. So in the global voting, we're going to vote for all these here. So are we ready then, Alejandro? Yes. So just to summarize, we need to have two-thirds of the vote for this to be approved. And we only count positive votes. Negative votes and abstentions are counted against. And if someone does not vote, this does not count for the total percentage. So our suggestion is that if you have any doubts where you're not sure we'll vote in favor or against, you have two options, is to ask questions now so that we can clarify your concerns. And the other option is not voting, because not voting is abstaining. Because otherwise, if you abstain, this is a vote against the proposal. So we now open the microphones in case you have any doubts or any question. And we're open to, we're here to answer any questions that you might have. Any comments, any questions, we will give you the microphone if you wish to ask any questions or if you want clarification on any of these topics. If there are no comments and questions, we will proceed to the next point, which the next item is to proceed to vote the proposed reform. We now open the voting, the, the vote process, voting process. The vote registration system is now open. So once again, if there are any issues with uh, voting, please let us know with your devices. Alguien que no haya podido votar, que tenga dificultades técnicas en este momento. Anybody with technical difficulties? Okay, vamos a dar un minuto más. So one more minute. 
please let us know if you have any issues with voting. Otherwise, we close the voting procedure. So, once again, if you have any technical issues for voting, let us know. Otherwise, we will close the voter registration system. The number of votes is 398 in favor, 41 against, and 17 abstentions, and 15 did not vote. So two-thirds seems to be quite clear, but let me give you the exact percentage, please. The percentage is 87.28 percent, much more than two-thirds, which is 66.6. So. 87% is above two-thirds minimum requirements. It implies that the reform has reached two-thirds of the members present. So this has been approved by the Assembly. So having concluded the voting of the bylaws, we pass on to the next stage. We now consider item three of the order of business, which is the authorization to conduct uh, processes or steps, the chairman made the following motion to designate Oscar Robles Garay, Ernesto Majo, Eduardo Jimenez Arechaga, so that they may distinctly carry out the corresponding steps or procedures to obtain the approval communication of the approval, communication, registration, and publication of this amendment of the bylaws to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other public agencies of the Republic of Uruguay and are empowered to accept or discuss any observations that may be made by the competent authorities, including the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and may propose substitute text and appeal the resolutions of such authorities. We now submit this to the consideration and the vote registration system. Good. Again, if anybody has any technical problems, uh, let us know now. If anybody has any problems, please let us know now, because uh, if nobody does, then we'll close uh, the 
oh, with the votes now, the uh, registration system. Four hundred and ten votes in favor, one against, twenty six abstentions, and thirty four no votes. Good. So after these uh, votes, uh, we approve the decision uh, uh, by majority. And before I giving the floor, uh, before adjourning, uh, let me give the floor to Oscar Robles. Yes, I want to thank uh, the uh, audience for their trust and to congratulate my entire staff because they worked very hard for 34 months, especially in these recent weeks, preparing this tool that although it was not used, we had to be very serious preparing for the potential uh, different decisions, and that was very hard work, but thanks to their hard work, Work. Well, fortunately, we had your support, so we are going to implement all these adjustments as soon as possible. <laughs> now, we'll consider the fourth item, appointing two members to sign uh, the minutes. The president presents the next um, uh, uh, proposal to signing uh, uh, Daniel Grazer and Mundo Casares. Now we'll vote um, If anybody is having trouble to vote, please let us know. If not, I, I think that everybody wants to go partying. The result is 380 in favor, one against, 50 abstentions, and 35 didn't vote. So with this, we close. Yes, all right. So this motion is uh, approved by the majority. And uh, as there are no further discussions or uh, issues to uh, debate, uh, at 6.38, we adjourn. Thank you for your participation.